man escaped biology, will technology escape man? The science fiction writer Ken McLeod once told me that uh, sentient machines might think of us as in the same way that we think of bacteria. They'll be as aware of us as we are of bacteria. And I find this kind of vaguely comforting, but also quite terrifying. Because as we gather around the feet of these thinking machines, will they just one day obliterate us without a thought? Or will they just allow us to peacefully coexist? Now, I'm a designer. So um, you might ask, why on earth am I talking about this? Isn't this the domain of the physicist or the biologist? Well, actually, I, I think design has a very important role to play here. Because as designers, um, we think about the human context and we tell each other stories that rehearse the future before it's happened. Um, technology is uh, a way of achieving new things, bringing new things into the world. Uh, this thing that we worked on here is a concept for uh, a system that allows you to tell how fast you're eating. So there's a piezo sensor in the fork, uh, and there's a display on the, on the table mat, and it tells you how fast you're eating. But that's just technology, and, and really the human story behind it is that we get fat because we eat too fast. <laughs> the signal doesn't get to our stomach from the stomach to the brain quickly enough, so by slowing down how fast we eat, we're not going to get as fat. Um, we also come up with interesting provocations. Imagine having your social network messaging embedded under the skin of your fingertips. Um, or uh, having something embedded in your arm that tells you when you're getting sick. So these are provocations, and these are stories about the future. And, and this is why it's important to bring design and the human context into it. About 50 years ago, um, Marshall McLuhan, uh, the great thinker, said that all um, technology is an extension of the human body. It's all on this evolutionary path from uh, our, our very early beginnings to the world that we can manipulate. So from the flint axe to the Large Hadron Collider, these are all extensions of our body. Now, evolution, put it simply, I've had this confirmed by some evolutionary biologists, is, is simply the passing of information from one organism to another, often through increasing complexity. And, and when the amount of data uh, required to pass on got too large, we had to invent things called brains. Uh, and from brains, we got language, and from language, we got writing, and from writing, we got maths. And then ultimately, we've been able to create a world where we can create other intelligences. Now, if we think about the emotional effect that something as dumb as this can have on us, how this can alter our behavior, and, and the way that we think and feel. Imagine what uh, a machine that's so smart will be able to do when we put it inside our brains and inside our bodies. Um, and it can be quite a terrifying prospect. Um, beyond just tech, uh, the actual manufacturing machines, there's, there's this cute little fella, actually it's a girl, the goat, um, <laughs> uh, and, and she's called, she, well I don't know what her name is, but she's a spider goat. Now, that sounds really creepy and scary, and it is kind of. They took a gene from a spider, and they put it into the goat. And now, when you milk the goat, you can get spider silk out of it. Now, this, kind, this feels brutal, and it feels strange, and it feels creepy, but we've been doing this for the whole history of, of uh, domestication of livestock. We've been designing animals as our tools ever since we uh, first saw something resembling a cow and, and uh, domesticated it. Um, and I think that it's very important for us to consider the, co the consequences of what we do um, and to really think about the machines and the creatures that we will be building and growing and breeding in this world uh, that's coming up very soon. Thank you.